Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie, I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I recorded myself modeling my entry for the speed modeling challenge on 3D Total and it took 75 minutes and everything was great and then Cam Studio decided to to crash at the worst possible time so I, I lost all of the footage and I'm not in a huge hurry to remodel this um, again so what we're going to do is we're going to spend uh, a few minutes kind of perusing the project that I created and we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that uh, that went into it and hopefully you can you can pick out at least a little bit of, of modeling um, information from this but also we can talk a little bit about how I set this up as a render for the speed modeling challenge so that in the future if you're participating in these competitions you'd be able to pull something from that so let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the Studio Max file. Um, this is the basic setup. I'm using a simple two-point lighting uh, gimmick here. Got the key light. It's this one here. I'm using a, a cool bluish. You can kind of see it coming from right here. And then this one, the one on the on the right, is is sort of a warmer light. Um, the background is just a, a plain object, and I grabbed the outside edges using you know simple shift drag. And then I grabbed the interior corners and then chamfered them and gave them a whole lot of segments, right? You can give them like 15 segments and it'll give you this really cool gradual backdrop that always looks great. Um, and it looks realistic too because it, it mimics how you would do that in real life. Um, next, let me give you a, a quick blurb about the materials I used and then we'll take a look at the modeling. So I made very, very heavy use of the 3D Studio Max um, Pro materials through Mental Ray. I always use Mental Ray if you haven't figured that out already. Um, and I love the Pro materials and I recommend them to everybody because they allow you to do things very, very quickly um, without having to worry about the particulars. So, I mean, this entire television is almost exclusively the hardwood material. It's usually good for floors, but then I thought, you know, well, if I'm making like a 50s television that's made out of wood, I might as well, you know, use a wood material. So what, what I like about this particular um, pro material is that I can just hand it uh, an a image map like this, just simple mahogany, and then it will go ahead and, and apply it to the material um, itself. So very, very simple and straightforward. Um, I darkened it up a lot using the, sat, the stain, and then uh, you know, gave it a few finish applications, and then I'm done. Woo! So that was very convenient. The only um, materials on here that actually use a bitmap are the wood for the actual television housing, the logo, which you can't really see in the render anyway. Yeah, you can't really see it. And then the dial, which you can see right here. I used a, a JPEG for the, for the dial. And then the rest of it is, is modeling, which is what the, the competition's all about. So let's have a quick look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and select this here. Delete everything else. All right, let's have a let's have a close up look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a basic material to everything, make it easier for you to see. Okay, so um, this model is broken into only a few major components. Right, there's the the screen, which is essentially a truncated sphere. Very simple, very basic. Uh, because it's a CRT, that's all I had to do for the screen. Then there's um, the screen housing, which was a lot harder, and I actually saved that for last in terms of modeling, so I'm going to save that for last in, uh, when, while talking about it. And then finally, um, there's the main housing, uh, and then the doodads that are attached to it. And these doodads are not special at all. I mean, we're talking about, like, a chamfered box, um, a cone that's been stretched a little bit for the feet, and then some planes for the for this um, like vent in the back. The main housing is a, a typical subdivision object. Um, I've used Turbo Smooth for all of the major you know smoothing elements in here. And if you've watched my other Monday movies, you're already familiar with the the basic concepts of subdivision modeling, right? You know the idea of three edges. So if we look at this really gradual corner up here, we can realize that you know, it's being caused by the three leading edges. So one, two, three, gives me that nice smooth gradient. And what, you know, what I was thinking about during the entire modeling process was, okay, 
how can I add such and such a detail like you know like this like the speaker area without totally obliterating the rest of the housing and that was done by applying this high frequency edges right here right so when I'm working on this this intrusion to create the the vents I'm looking at one two three for the lower groove one two three for the outer groove up here and then one two three so that it won't start affecting you know the curvature up here in this flat area or out here the curvature of this corner right so that's why we've got tons and tons of edges going all over the place because they're they're confining these changes in mesh flow um, very briefly if you take a look right here at these speaker objects they're actually just a whole bunch of uh, replicated grooves basically and then when I was working on the mesh flow I just I just deleted all these faces and then extruded the edges inward very simple very easy because you know you're on a time crunch so you do whatever you can I mean some of this is even pretty sloppy on the inside but whatever it doesn't matter um, these feet are just you know copies of these inter interior polygons that I've you know sliced up and, and brought uh, out here and then replicated so they're very straightforward um, this is just a chamfered box up here where I put the logo this is also a chamfered box nothing special um, the only interesting thing here might be let me make this bigger because I'm getting some clipping uh, there okay so the only thing that's special right here might be this um, it's supposed to be a, a screw but it's actually really really terrible um, I'm not proud of this particular model at all um, but you know from far away when we're rendering it as, as part of the final image you can't really tell how ugly the modeling is um, which I like so that's probably one of the, the best things about a speed modeling challenge is that you know the the final render counts for a lot and then the final mesh structure when you when you look at it up close um, for these small details is not as important the, um, the knob here, also very simple, it's just a, a cylinder that I went ahead and chamfered some edges on and then gave it these cool little grooves to make it like a knob. And then the rest of the detail, of course, is made up by the, by the texture map that I used. So it's very, very straightforward. Um, really quick, let's talk a little bit about this screen. This was not fun at all, and here's why. And you can, you can even look at it, right? It's a little bit lumpy on some of these edges because I had to model a lot of this by hand. If you look at my image, you'll take a look down here where it's it's a 90 degree half circle, whereas up here it's a 90 degree smooth corner. And being able to make the change from here to up here was hard, extra hard. So that required modeling this by hand, um, which I was not looking forward to. That's why I did it toward the end of the project. Um, but it, it came together all right. One of the things that was nice was that since since this was going to be going into the housing, right, it's just going to be sitting inside of the housing. I didn't have to worry too much about lumpy geometry, you know, on the inside because you're not going to see it. So, so that didn't matter too much. Then the final thing was the inside of the screen where I used a spline to give me that guide so we could get this sort of old time, you know, screen shape. Uh, line that up. And then I position the vertices by hand. You can kind of tell it's a little bit ugly. But the, the Turbo Smooth picks up for a lot of that ugliness. The only thing, if you're looking at it face on, that is actually a remnant from the original rectangle spline that I used was this outer groove right here. The outside up here, this was done by hand. The inside was done by hand. But this stuff all down here, this is all procedural from the original spline that I used. So there you have it. That's the project rundown. I created this uh, 1950s television using 3D Studio Max and Mental Ray, using Pro Materials, and not worrying too much about the underlying geometry structure, but more importantly on the speed and turning out something that, that looks like complex geometry when actually it's, it's rather simple underneath. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.